Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and today I want to talk to you about what is probably my favorite lens that I have for the Canon RF system for my for my EOS R6, and it's not my beloved 100 to 500 f 4.5 to 7.1. Although I'm crazy about this lens, and it's not this completely amazing and tiny. 70 to 200 f 2.8 although I'm crazy about this lens It's not my 24 to 70 f 2.8 although I'm crazy about this lens It's not the 50 millimeter 1.8 that I'm not even going to show you because I'm not crazy about that lens and it's not the 24 to 105 Kit lens the f 4 to 7.1. I'm not really crazy about that lens either, but my favorite lens is this completely insane 800 millimeter f 11 lens and I got to thinking about how much I like this lens and I wanted to make a video telling you about why I like this lens and I didn't even really have a way to put it into words so I got to thinking about it today and I've come up with 10 or 11 or 12 I'm really not sure exactly how many uh, ways I'm going to list for you so far because I'm kind of doing this video by the seat of my pants but I'm going to tell you a number of reasons why I love this crazy I love to call it crazy because it's it's just crazy what it can do 800 millimeter f11 is stm lens stick around after I tell you all the things I love about this lens because I do have a couple of things that I don't like about this lens that I'll tell you about as well okay so the first reason that I love this lens is because and this is a weird reason it's because f11 isn't so bad you know, when I first heard about this lens and its little brother, the 600 millimeter F11 were going to be coming out and they were F11 lenses, I thought that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. And honestly, when I first heard that this lens, this 100 to 500 was a 4.5 to 7.1, I thought 7.1 was way too slow. And I thought that was nearly the dumbest thing I'd ever heard of, except for an F11 lens. That is completely crazy. That'll never work. There's no way I'll ever buy that. What in the world? Well, you know what? I gotta eat my words because two things make this F11 lens really awesome and they both have to do with what is connected to this F11 lens. This is the Canon R6 and it is incredible in terms of handling noise. It works amazingly well at high ISOs, which an F11 lens is gonna cause you to use. And, you know, I remember when it was amazing when a camera would autofocus on f8. Well, this has to autofocus on f11. You know, the wider the aperture, the easier it is on a camera's autofocus system. So f11 makes it really hard. But this camera right here, uh, which is the R6, and I'm sure the R5 and the R3, which I've never used, I'm sure those are every bit as good, if not better, at autofocusing with this crazy lens. So. In this new era of amazing mirrorless cameras, F11 isn't so bad. And that's the first thing I love about this lens. The second thing I love about this lens is it's sharp. And you know, that's really important because all the other things I'm gonna tell you about this lens that I love about it, if it wasn't sharp, it wouldn't matter. You know what I mean? All the other things that I like about it, if, if, if I can't get a good picture with it, who cares about all that other stuff? So it's sharp. You know, it's not as sharp as my 100 to 500 lens, but it has 300 extra millimeters, but it's sharp enough. It does the job. Um, you know, I, I've uh, made photographs of great blue heron and lots of things with this lens that have been just really, really incredibly tack sharp. And you know, that's important. So the fact that it's sharp enough to not just be considered garbage, you know, if it's not sharp, I'm not going to use it, but it is sharp, so I do use it, and I use it all the time. So the second reason I love this lens is it's sharp. The third thing I love about this lens is it's fast. And kind of like number two, the sharpness that was sharp enough, it's fast enough. It's not as fast as my 24 to 70 that costs twice as much, or my 70 to 200, or my 100 to 500. Those focus faster, but this one focuses fast enough. You can point it at a bird in flight, press the focus button, and it will lock on it. Uh, it's fast enough 
to be useful. Fourth thing I love about this lens is it's light. I mean, it is really, really light. It's 800 millimeters, and I'm, I'm going to refer to my cheat sheet because I don't have all these weights memorized. It weighs only 2.77 pounds. Now, for years, I carried around a Nikon 500 f4G VR lens, and that thing nearly killed me <laughs> because it was so heavy. That lens weighed 8.6 pounds. And usually I had a heavier than an R6 camera body attached to it and a teleconverter. I mean, gosh, that thing was just tough. And a lot of times I wouldn't carry it to places because it was too heavy. This I can carry anywhere because it's 8.6 pounds versus 2.77, much, much lighter. Now, uh, after I bought my 500 F4, later Nikon came out with a 200 to 500, which was much, much lighter. It only weighed 5.07 pounds. Remember, this weighs 2.77, about half as much. A little bit more than half, but not a whole lot more than half. So, you know, that is, that's a big deal. Now, Nikon now has this incredible little lens. It's the 500 uh, PF. It's tiny and it's really light. Well, the 500 PF weighs 3.2 pounds, 3.21 pounds, and this weighs 2.77. So it's 300 millimeters more and it's a good bit lighter. So. The fourth thing I love about the 800 F11 Canon is it's light. The fifth thing I love about my 800 F11 is that it's small and collapsible. I love that. I was watching a YouTube video recently and it was a, a pretty well-respected YouTuber, uh, mostly does Fuji stuff and he was reviewing the Nikon ZFC and he was talking about this lens and it, in this position it doesn't work and you have to do it like that for it to even work. And he called that a non-starter. And I'm like, that's the greatest feature of the lens because it will store smaller than its operational position. And as someone who has, you know, been doing photography for well over 10 years and always trying to figure out how to fit all of my gear into my bag, having a lens that will store smaller than its functional size is a great thing. And that's exactly what the RF 800 F11 does. Here it is, and in this mode, it won't work at all. You turn this ring and extend it and lock it, and now it's functional. But because you get rid of this, however much this is, three inches, three and a half, four inches, I don't know how much smaller it gets, it allows this 800 millimeter lens to be stored in a camera bag. This, this is Heather's camera bag, and she has my uh, 200 to 500 Nikon in there. And so there is a 200 millimeter lens. It's a 200 to 500 that's zoomed back to 200. So we'll take that out and we'll see that the 800 F11 and the R6 will fit right in that spot where the 200 to 500 sits and have a couple of inches to spare. So the fifth thing I love about the 800 F11 is it's small and collapsible. The sixth thing that I love about my 800 f11 lens is it's inexpensive let me get my cheat sheet it costs 899 dollars and that that kind of sounds like a lot uh, if you're not used to how much camera equipment costs but let me tell you 899 dollars for an 800 millimeter lens is ridiculously cheap for example by 100 to 500 that i showed you earlier is 2799 dollars nikon's fabulous 200 to 500 i think is an absolute bargain and it's $1,396. That amazing Nikon 500 PF lens, the one that's really, really light and small, it's $3,596. Now, as the time of I'm recording this video, it's $300 off, but even then it's $3,296. That 500 F4 that I had for years and finally sold, I paid $7,999 for it. And if you want to go third party, you can get a Tamron lens, a 150 to 600 lens, and even it is $13.99. So for $899, reason number six I love this lens is it's inexpensive. Reason number seven I love this 800F11 lens is, and this is really surprising, it has great bokeh. F11 lenses are not supposed to have great bokeh. But uh, I went out and I started working with this lens and the, you know, the first thing that surprised me is that it's pretty sharp to be so crazy inexpensive. 
And then I, as I worked with this lens, you know, I've had it for about eight months now. And as I worked with this lens, I kept noticing that I really enjoyed the look of the out of focus areas in the background of pictures that are, were made with this lens. Now it can't compete with that 500 F4 for amazingly buttery backgrounds, but the backgrounds are pretty doggone nice for an $899 F11 lens. So reason number seven I love this lens is it has great bokeh. Reason number eight that I love this 800 millimeter F11 lens is it's 800 millimeters. That is awesome. That is such a huge, huge focal range. I mean, that's completely awesome. You know, if you go to B&H and you look up 800 millimeters, you'll find this lens for $899. You'll find a Nikon lens for 16,296, and you'll find a Canon lens for 12,999. Reason eight is 800 millimeters. Reason number nine that I love this 800 millimeter F11 lens is because it, like all other Canon RF mount lenses, has this control ring. Super cool. Now I've seen people review these Canon lenses and mention the control ring and say, I would never use that for anything. Well, let me tell you what I did with mine. I programmed mine for exposure compensation. Completely awesome. A lot of, I, I like to shoot fully manual, but have automatic ISO. Sometimes I shoot fully manual, fully manual, but the only other way I shoot is fully manual with automatic ISO. And with an electronic viewfinder, you can look through the viewfinder and see your shot and you can say, hey, there's some background light. I need to adjust the exposure compensation and you can point this right at the bird and just go click, 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 click. And every click is a third of a stop and just dial your exposure right in just by adjusting this control ring. Reason number nine that I love the 800 F11 is because like all RF Canon lenses, it has the control ring on it. Reason number 10 I love this 800 millimeter F11 lens from Canon is because it works with Canon RF mount cameras. The Canon R6 is the least expensive camera you can buy that has top, top, top notch animal eye detect autofocus. You know, you can spend a lot more money and get an R5 or an R3 or a Sony A1 or even now the Nikon Z9 is coming out that looks like it's going to have top notch animal eye detect autofocus, but the cheapest way to get a camera with that is this Canon R6 and this 800 F11 lens works with it and I love it for that. Well, what do I not like about this 800 millimeter F11 lens that I love so much? Well, there's really three things. The first is the lens doesn't come with a lens hood and you can buy one from Canon that's like 40 or $50. Uh, but most of the time when I was looking for it, it was out of stock, but I found a third party one. I'm not even sure who makes it. It says JJC on it. I found it on Amazon for about 20 or 25 bucks and it works really nicely. It even has a, a locking button so it won't come off without pressing that button. This lens hood is actually way better than the lens hood made by Nikon on my Nikon 200 to 500 lens. So fix that problem. The next problem is, and, and I even made a video about this, when I first started shooting with this camera, I had trouble because I would be working on a shot and I would bump the manual focus override and that would knock me off of focus. And I, I, I wasn't able to teach myself to hold the lens here or here and not hold it by the focus ring. What I did was I put a, I permanently attached, I'm never gonna take this thing off or I have no intention of it. I permanently attached an Arca Swiss plate to this um, quarter Swiss attachment on the bottom of the lens. And now when I put my hand up here, I hold it, my hand rests on the Arca Swiss plate instead of holding it by the focus ring and messing up my focus. And this lens is great for video. So a lot of times I'll just toss it on a tripod real quick and make video clips. You can always hand hold it for stills, but for video, I like it better to be on a tripod so I'm not wiggling around. So I fixed my second problem with the lens. Now, the third thing I don't like about this 800 F11 lens is it has a terrible minimum focus distance. It's something like 19.23 feet or some ridiculously long number like that. Of all the lenses that I've talked about, today, it has the longest minimum focus distance. Uh, the second longest was that $7,999 500 F4 that I had, but this one's quite a bit longer than that. Now, 
it's usually not a problem because, you know, I'm working on little bitty birds and usually they are more than 19 feet away from me. Usually if I scoot more than or closer than 19 feet from a little bird, it goes away. But sometimes I've had to back up and sometimes I've been in a situation where I can't back up. So the minimum focus distance is, is a, a bit of an Achilles heel for this lens. Now, just today, I ordered some um, extension tubes, some um, active, the, 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 have, uh, the electricity passes through these extension tubes, and that should minimize that uh, minimum focus distance a little bit. So stay tuned. I'm sure I'll have a video about that coming down the road at some point. But those are the three things that I don't like about this lens that otherwise I love. Thank you very much for tuning in to this video about how much I love my Canon RF 800 F11. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please take a moment and give me a thumbs up. If you want to see some more stuff about this lens and all sorts of other camera stuff, subscribe and hit the bell, and I really appreciate you watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.